Hello, I'm Rafa Oleszko and I'm a Cloud Software Engineer at Hazelcast. In this video, I would like to show how to set up Hazelcast on AWS ECS environment. So we will first configure Hazelcast discovery for ECS running on Fargate, but exactly the same configuration you can apply for ECS with the backend on EC2 instances. Then we will run a Spring Boot application with embedded Hazelcast. You can either start from scratch using start Spring IO and add Hazelcast dependency, or you can just clone repository with a Spring Boot application with Hazelcast already embedded. For this video, we will use AWS UI Web Console, but you can do exactly the same using AWS command line. To do it, follow the, follow the link of the blog post listed here. The steps for this video are very, pretty simple. So we we'll first prepare the application with Ada, Hazelcast AWS ECS configuration and then do all the AWS steps like creating cluster, IMRO, task definition and finally starting the ECS service. So let's get started. In our IntelliJ, we have the project, Spring Boot project with Hazelcast embedded. There's nothing very interesting here, it's just a simple controller with the application starting this. In the dependencies, we have Hazelcast all. Now we have to define the Hazelcast YAML configuration file. In this file, we will specify that we would like to use, instead of multicast, we'll use AWS for the discovery. The second thing we need to specify is what interface should be used, because ECS task has multiple network interfaces and we need to bind to the right one. If you'd like to find what is the number for you here, check out your VPC in your AWS console and look for the VPC you will use in your ECS cluster. And CIDR, that is your number. So use the same number in your Hazelcast configuration. Otherwise, it won't, Hazelcast won't be able to discover themselves. With such a configuration, we are ready to build our Spring Boot application. So we use Maven Click Clean Package, and in a second, we should have our fat jar ready. The next step, we need to put it into a Docker image. So we create a Docker file. This will be a very standard Docker file, which you will find in any Spring Boot application. So nothing specific to Hazelcast here. We can build the image with Docker, Docker build. And next, after building this, obviously we will push, we push it into, into the Docker Hub registry. Note that if you have the same VPC, you can just use this, this image we just built. You don't have to build your own. As the next step, we finally create ECS cluster. So we go to the console to ECS, you, we will use Fargate so networking is enough, give it a name and the cluster, that's a very simple step, the cluster is ready. The next step will be to create an IAM role for Hazelcast task. Because Hazelcast uses specific AWS API for the discovery, so we need to create an IAM role. An IAM role for ECS with policy, we'll, we'll define in a second. Describe our policy and our policy needs to be related to ECS, obviously. And in the ECS, we will need two permissions. One is to describe tasks. And the second one will be to list the tasks. We select for all resources, that's what we need. And we also need one, one permission for EC2. That will be to discover public IP addresses and this, is, this endpoint will be describe network interfaces. If you don't define this one, you will not be able to access your cluster from outside. The, we can give a name for the policy and in a second, we can add this policy to the role. So we go back to the role, we refresh the policies, find our policy, and uh, we will use it in this role. 
After creating a row, we, we can yeah give it a name, and after creating the row, we can go back to the to the ECS co console and create a task definition for our application. So we select we will select Fargate, but you can use the same for EC2. We give it a name like Hazelcast definition. We specify the task row we just defined. So this will be our Hazelcast ECS row. And your task execution row should be this one. If you don't have it defined, you have to define it yourself, but you should have it in your, in your profile anyway. That is to store the logs. Then we add the container and um, give it a name, give it the image we pushed. You can check that the logs are applied because otherwise you will not be able, but there should be a default option here to send your logs to the CloudWatch. Specify the resources that will be related to your application. We give it some, some values here and finally create a task definition. And with this in place, the last thing we have to do is to open our cluster and create a service. So our service will be Fargate. We look for our task definition. We specify the name. We, then we specify the number of the task, let's say three. And in the next step, we need to specify VPC. You need to specify the same VPC you, we checked before. So this will be our VPC and some subnet. Then we need to specify the security group. You can create a new one. For our application, we will need to open the ports for Hazelcast and for Spring Boot application. So first for the Hazelcast, it will be a TCP port uh, and it will be 5701. And for, for Spring Boot, we need 8080. So for Spring Boot, it will be, we can define TCP or HTTP, it doesn't matter much. So we create the security group and we are ready to create the service. So when a service is created, we can open this and our service, we defined three tasks. So it created three, the same three replicated tasks. And at the task, we can check for the logs, refresh. And in the logs, we can check that, uh, that three Hazelcast members, they formed one consistent Hazelcast cluster. That's, that is how discovery worked. That was our goal for this video. As the last thing, you can also check, um, check what are the public IPs of, of any of the tasks. So for, this public IP you can use for to access your service. This will be your uh, to access your Spring Boot application. And that is all for this video. Thanks a lot for watching.